What would you do if you won the lottery? Buy a huge mansion? Book flight tickets to your dream destination? Save up for your future? Well, one little known Filipino hero didn't do any of that. Instead, he used his lottery winnings to help fund the Philippine Revolution. Today, we learn all about Candido Iban, the Aklanon hero who selflessly helped pave the way for our independence. Candido Iban came from humble beginnings. In fact, he started out just like many Filipinos. Born in 1863 in Liloan, Malinao, Aklan, Candido grew up as a son of farmers. Back then, and honestly until now, Filipino farmers didn't exactly live an ideal life. Despite their backbreaking hard work, they hardly earned enough to feed their families. Such was the life Candido thought he was going to lead, but destiny had other plans. When he got older, Candido traveled to Iloilo and then to Negros to make a decent living. He worked as a sugar farmer for a while, but as luck would have it, an opportunity to work overseas came to him. Determined to change his fate, Candido and his friend Francisco Castillo sailed across the Pacific Ocean and joined Australia's first generation of Filipino migrant workers. Candido, Francisco, and other Filipino workers like them were called Manila men, even though most of them didn't even come from Manila. Together with other migrant workers from Asia, they played an integral part in developing the pearling industry in Australia. Candido Iban became the first OFW from Aklan, and perhaps even from the entire Visayas region. But life in Australia was not as easy as it seems. Working in an unfamiliar place, thousands of miles from home, is never easy, as many OFWs today can attest to. Candido was the first of his kind. He didn't have anyone to ask what life in Australia as a Filipino was like. Instead, he had to figure it out on his own. Candido arrived in Australia at a time of great racial prejudice. Like the Philippines, Australia at the time was in the throes of colonialism. Its native Aboriginal population suffered greatly. Many Filipinos found camaraderie with these Aboriginal Australians. While some Manila men eventually returned home to the Philippines, many also stayed behind and started their families there. That's why today, many indigenous Australians have Filipino ancestry. Pearl diving was a dangerous job. Every day, Candido risked his life to go into the dark depths of the ocean and retrieve these tiny slivers of light. One wrong move would have him breathless and drowning at the bottom of the ocean. But little did he know, Candido's fate would soon change overnight. He entered the lottery on a whim, thinking he had nothing to lose. He didn't actually expect to win the prize money. What he won was quite a big amount at the time, enough for Candido and his friend Francisco to quit their jobs as pearl divers and make their way back home. On their way home, the two met another Filipino by chance. It turned out to be Procopio Bonifacio, brother of the Supremo Andres Bonifacio and a revolutionary leader in his own right. Procopio stoked the flames of Candido and Francisco's nationalist desires. Over the course of the trip, he convinced the two to formally join the revolutionary movement. By the time the three men arrived home, Candido and Francisco were fully-fledged revolutionaries. The money he won would have been enough to lift his family out of poverty. But Candido knew that they were living in a time of peril. Instead of using the money to help just one family, he instead donated it to the revolution that would liberate thousands of families across the country. Candido used his lottery winnings to buy the first printing press of the Katipunan, which helped print thousands of copies of revolutionary propaganda. The Katipunan used it to print forms, cartilla, as well as the legendary Kalayaan, which was KKK's official newspaper at the time. This publication contained nationalist poems and short stories that encouraged many Filipinos to join in on the fight for independence. Candido's donation turned out to be a recruiting machine of epic proportions. From 300 members in January 1896, the Katipunan grew to have over 30,000 members before it was discovered by the Spaniards. By 1897, in recognition of Candido and Francisco's contributions to the revolution, Andres Bonifacio gave them an even bigger task. They were sent to Aklan where they established the first Katipunan chapter in the Visayas region. Candido and Francisco kick-started the revolutionary movement in Aklan, which became the first place outside of Luzon to join the national revolution. Candido's hometown of Liloan Malinao became the base of KKK operations in the Visayas. But one moment of mistimed judgment would eventually signal Candido's heroic death. In 1897, he believed that it was the right time to strike. 
Together with 82 Cateponeros from his hometown, they marched to the Poblacion to try to persuade the local authorities to join and support the revolution. But the uprising failed, and soon the leaders were captured, including our Candido Iban. On March 23, 1897, Candido and 16 others were brutally executed by the Spanish for their subversion. They would later be known as the 19 Martyrs of Aklan, and to this day, they are honored and celebrated for their bravery. Today, a monument commemorating Candido and the failed uprising stands in the middle of Malinao's town plaza. Most Aklanons recognize and celebrate their local hero, but he's not so well known to the rest of the country. His story tells us that even regular Filipinos can make a huge mark in history. As we learn about Candido Iban's life, may we recognize the power of Filipino laborers past, present, and future. When learning about our history, we always highlight heroes like Andres Bonifacio, Jose Rizal, and Emilio Jacinto. But actually, the revolution wasn't just confined to Luzon. In fact, it's the collective efforts of all true Filipinos across the country, and indeed even abroad, that won us our independence. Candido Iban's life is a lesson in selfless dedication to one's country. We can all stand to be a little more like him. If you were in Candido's shoes, do you think you would have used your lottery winnings the same way? Tell us about it in the comments. Like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more videos on Philippine history. Thanks for watching.